Before we examine how the prophecies about the great monarch can be seen in light of the gospel, Old Testament, church history parallels, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history, from start to finish, is completely contained in the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. If the Old prefigures the New, then it makes sense that the entire history of the Catholic Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament and the Gospels. This prefigurement continues all the way until the end of church history. Elevated to the papacy, Angelo Giuseppe Cardinal Roncalli. He will reign as Pope John the 23rd. Roman history is the foundation of Western civilization. The city of Rome has a particular importance to the Catholic Church. However, in these days, traditional Catholics know that Roman Catholicism no longer has a place in Rome. The Vatican II Novus Ordo sect has taken over the Vatican, setting up an anti-church in place of the Catholic Church. It is undeniable that Rome has played a very large role in the plans of Almighty God. In this video, I would like to examine the parallels between the legendary founding of Rome in 753 BC and the likely upcoming abolition of Vatican City. These parallels are part of a larger symmetry to Roman and Roman Catholic history, of which I would also like to portray in this video. Please keep in mind that this video lies outside of the framework of the parallels between the Old Testament, Gospels, and Church history. So here's an outline of this video. Part 1. The Founding of Rome by the Two Brothers and its Seven Kings Part 2. Seven Kings of Vatican City and the Two Reigning, quote, Brothers Part 3. A Symmetrical View of Roman History And Part 4. Parallels Between the Founding and the Abolition of Rome The legend of Rome's foundation is well known. The story goes that after the city of Troy fell, a survivor by the name of Aeneas fled with his family to the Italian peninsula. His descendants, Romulus and Remus, were cast away by their uncle when they were infants. They ended up on the shore of the Tiber River, exposed and helpless. A she-wolf came along and suckled the two boys. The boys grew up and desired to found a city of their own. Romulus wanted to found a city on the Palatine Hill, and Remus wanted to found a city on the Aventine Hill. Their followers were split between the two brothers. The disagreement became violent, and Romulus killed his brother Remus. Romulus became the first king of Rome. He was followed by six other kings. The seventh king was deposed by the Romans, who formed a republic to rule themselves instead of being ruled by kings. In 1870, the Freemasonic forces, led by Victor Emmanuel II, confiscated the Papal States from the Holy See. From 1870 until 1929, the popes had no official land to rule over. Thus, they had no temporal kingdom. During this period, the popes were referred to as prisoners in the Vatican. The situation for the papacy changed starting in 1929 with the signing of the Lateran Treaty. The Lateran Treaty 
gave back a small amount of land to the Holy See, which is presently known as Vatican City. Pope Pius XI became the first priest king of Vatican City. Pope Pius XI was followed by Pope Pius XII, and then John XXIII, Paul VI, John Paul I, John Paul II, and Benedict XVI, all of whom were legal kings of the sovereign country of Vatican City. All seven were validly ordained Catholic priests, and thus all seven were priest kings of Vatican City. On February 11, 2013, Benedict XVI mysteriously resigned. And then in March of 2013, Jorge Bergoglio was apparently elected, taking the name of Francis. Jorge Bergoglio was not ordained in the Catholic Rite of Ordination, but instead in the Novus Ordo Rite. Thus, Jorge Bergoglio is not a priest king, as were the seven previous kings of Vatican City. Benedict still wears white, he resides in the Vatican, and has not reverted his name back to Ratzinger. Benedict is de facto head of the conservative faction of the Novus Ordo, while Francis is de facto leader of the liberal faction. Despite their differences, the appearance is that Benedict and Francis are ruling together almost like two brothers. Now, stepping back from the pattern of the two brothers and the seven kings of Rome and Vatican City, there emerges a larger pattern of history. So let us briefly walk through the history of Rome with a wide lens and a very broad view. As noted previously, Rome was founded by two brothers. Upon the death of Remus, Rome was ruled by seven kings, after which the Romans decided to form a republic. The word republic comes from the Latin res publica, which means a thing of the people. The Romans ruled themselves through the republic until Rome transitioned from a republic to an empire. The Roman Empire was vast and was ruled autocratically by the Roman Emperor, the first of which was Octavian Augustus Caesar. In 312 AD, Roman Emperor Constantine legalized Christianity, and in 380 AD, Roman Emperor Theodosius made Catholicism, also known as Nicene Christianity, the state religion of the Roman Empire. In time, the Roman Empire fell, but Charlemagne founded the Holy Roman Empire, again with Catholicism being the state religion. The Holy Roman Empire was ruled by Catholic emperors until 1806, when Napoleon deposed the last Holy Roman Emperor, Francis II. The French Revolution and the subsequent rise of Napoleon saw the transitioning of Europe from an empire to republics. In time, all of Europe would come to be ruled by republics or quasi-republics. And then in 1929, Pope Pius XI signed the Lateran Treaty, becoming the first of seven priest kings of Vatican City. And as stated previously, there are now two brothers reigning in Vatican City. Thus, there is a symmetry to Roman history. The founding of Rome seems to have reverse parallels with the likely upcoming abolition of Vatican City. Romulus and Remus were both leaders of separate factions who disagreed on how to found the city of Rome. And similarly, the two, quote, brothers of Benedict XVI and Francis both lead separate factions within the Novus Ordo sect. Benedict is followed by conservatives, and Francis is followed by liberals. Romulus killed Remus and then took his place as the first king of Rome. But now, because we are heading towards the abolition of Vatican City, first, Benedict XVI was deposed, or he resigned, as the last of the seven kings of Vatican City, and then he reigns alongside of his brother, Francis. When Romulus and Remus were abandoned on the bank of the Tiber River, they were suckled by a she-wolf. And just recently, during the infamous Amazon Synod in October of 2019, vulgar images were displayed of a woman suckling animals from the Amazon region. And as we have previously noted, the transition from Roman Republic to Roman Empire is paralleled in reverse by Europe's transitioning from Holy Roman Empire back to the era of republics. 
Ultimately, these trends point to the possible imminent revocation of the Lateran Treaty and the abolition of Vatican City.